welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 130 this episode is with the fantastically talented lauren mary kim who's so fun so fun i had such a great time talking to her um we talk about everything and mind you this is a woman who has combined with her stunts and her acting like 200 credits on imdb so she's done everything and we covered quite a bit of it we did uh we talked about how she actually started in dance and then she eventually became a Laker girl, which is pretty cool. Uh, we talked about that, what that was like, and then getting into stunts from there. And then we talk about the crazy array of jobs that she's had over her career. And with stunts, it could be anything. She like Her first job was uh, working on Ned's Declassified. So we talked about what it was like doing that. We talked about moving on to do Always Sunny in Philadelphia, to do Into the Badlands, one of my all-time favorite shows. Uh, we talked about how she eventually became uh, the double for Electra in the Defenders and what that was like. And most recently, she got to do the motion capture for Ahsoka in the Clone Wars, and she was a stunt double for the Armorer in The Mandalorian. I mean, right? This is one woman doing all these things. It's crazy. So we talked about that. We talked about uh, working in mocap for different video games, what that was like. We talked about her incredible YouTube series called Kali Diaries. It's so good. For anyone that's a fan of like stunt scenes and fight choreography, check it out it's so good Kali diaries it's amazing um she taught we talk about uh some stunt pro tips that she's learned over the years that uh you may not know um but full disclosure when i was recording this it was great we had a great time but for some reason the software that i was using decided to have network issues so it kind of came through in the recording but stick with it her stories are great lauren is amazing i Think it's, I think you're still really going to enjoy it. It's a great chat. Um, yeah, just wanted to say that up at the front. So you're like, wait, what's going on? Am I, I, is it kind of choppy for a reason? Yes, it is. And I apologized. So yeah, that's what happened. It's still a great chat. You're going to love it. So let's just jump right into it. Please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 130 with Lauren Mary Kim. Theme song time. schedules are always like reversed with everyone else so it's really right. interesting and i i said training last night in aido i think is how you pronounce it it's a oh, using yeah. the sword and it was my first day and my legs hurt <laughs> wow yeah it's something new and different right so yeah exactly and and like it's like it's so weird to retrain your brain because like when you're hitting someone you, you follow through that's like the first thing you learn but with a yeah. sword there's no follow through it's like you find the right base and the timing and then you strike from a position and i'm like oh man they're like you keep going forward i was like i know i'm trying <laughs> and like yeah. they start you from the bottom so it's very much like okay it's your first day you're gonna learn two cuts and that's all you're gonna do the whole time right. i was like cool but you start from like seated where you're like sitting on your knees and then you come up with the sword first mm -hmm. and so it's a lot of up and down on your knees on a hardwood floor and i'm an idiot who wore shorts not a good idea don't do that or as next time next time things you learn the hard way in my experience yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting that's another reason i love talking to like uh actors and stunt performers and stuff because like you get it <laughs> yeah. yeah safety yeah. first <laughs> exactly yeah that's another thing i've learned there's so much that goes into like with stunt performers specifically all of its safety like you yeah. wouldn't realize that there's a safe way to light yourself on fire. You're like, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> There's to light yourself on fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you? I have. Oh, what was it like? Uh, it's a mind fuck because you're like I on bet. fire. But yeah. You're like, <laughs> it, it's just, um, it's, it's just a weird feeling. Sure. Did you do yeah. it? Now the real question is, did you do it on your own time or for a gig? For a gig. Okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> With certified, qualified people. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I've talked to a few people that are like, no, I, I did it on my own. 
to show that I do it. Like for, it was like training for the gig, you know, like they were already doing stunts and then they're like, I need to do a burn. So I'll do one and then be like, Hey, I can do a burn watch. And then they hire you for the burn. It's like, right. you, you lit yourself on fire in your free time. All right. That's awesome. I would only like good people to do it. To, Gotta be right. To, yeah, like, but I wouldn't like be like, Oh, what do I have in my house? Yeah. <laughs> no, just grab way, lighter forks. Like people back in the days that just try to figure it out because they were brand new. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that's crazy. Don't ever do that. Don't. <laughs> right, no. right. The, the disclaimer right out the gate. Yeah. It's always <laughs> years later, so. Yeah, that's fair. Isn't that weird that there was a first person? Did, like, there was somebody who's like, we could, to be. we could probably do that, right? And then they, like, figured it out, made a gel, like, figured out what worked and what. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, be a pioneer right there that, that, that's the reason why we have all these safety things because someone but crazy yeah. enough want to do it that's true and there were people that did it wrong <laughs> and that's why there's a lot of safety now yeah we that's learn from their mistakes that's right i wonder if there's like a brotherhood of all the old stunt performers and not us <laughs> <laughs> they're bald yeah that's <laughs> that's that's how you know <laughs> right no like, longer can go that's right <laughs> That's right. Are you a swimmer? No, no, no. Stunts. Oh, oh. <laughs> got it. <laughs> so you're you're in California. Yes. Are you from California? Yes. Right on. Right on. What part? Um, Stockton, California. Oh, sweet. There you go. Well, That's Los yep. Angeles. You know Stockton? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. People are like, oh, Stockton, or they're like, oh, so aren't there like a lot of cows there? Yeah. Or now? Oh, the Nate, the Diaz brothers. So. Right, right. That's that's probably where I know it from. Yeah. You know, things you know. That's pretty neat. So then, was entertainment something that you wanted to get into as a kid? Then, because Stockton's not inundated with entertainment all the time. No. Um, well, I always thought of being an actor because you know that's what kids always dream about. Because sure. like dance as a child, and I did theater. Oh, cool. Um, I you know I didn't. I had no idea I was going <laughs> to stop. I mean, back then, we didn't have social media like we do now, so we had no sure. idea what that industry was. So I mean, you went for it. That's a big deal because, like you said, a lot of people want to do it, but then going for it is a very different thing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. You did dance, though? That's cool. Yeah, that's what I started off as. So I danced my whole life. I moved to L.A. to be a dancer. Like, I wanted oh. to – pursue the dance world and uh, my a Laker girl actually what yeah so and then that's how I got into it I um I did gym gymnastics or like acrobatics as a child and so I was like oh, I want to take a gymnastic class so I went to an adult gy gymnastic class and I met a bunch of stunt guys who were like oh this is what we do for a living and then they started training me and then that's literally how I got in cool. yeah. that's pretty cool yeah right, yeah right. and a Laker girl I mean that's Everybody knows Laker girls. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What are uh, rehearsals like for that? Um, you know, I think we had rehearsals like twice a week, and then we would have games like one or three times a week. I mean, it was a rig rigorous schedule, um, but it was fun. Like, to it's got to be right. For a living, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's the the energy and like the Lakers and fun. And having the best seats uh, at the game. Good point. So. Good point. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. <laughs> Even better. Even better. <laughs> that's yeah. cool. I that I love looking back on things and that's pretty neat. So like and dance. I found that dance is so useful in a lot of things that you wouldn't expect, like stunts or even act. something about movement just translates. Yeah, know how to like control and use your body and manipulate it so it's really fun and yeah it helps with a lot of things in life <laughs> sure sure so do, yeah. when you're doing this with the laker girls did you have any injuries there because it's hard it's not easy um i don't think i had any in injuries no nothing okay. like i already do with stunts yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah you, i mean it's definitely wear body yeah. for sure yeah but yeah, yeah. nothing like stunts and then you got stunts and you're like, this is, I would much rather throw my body into walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this seems way more what I should be doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fire and <laughs> Just want to turn it up. <laughs> yeah. Turn yeah. It up, up. Hard to go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, what was it then about stunts that kind of drew you to it? Because it's, it hurts. 
Um, you know, it was a surgeon. So like, you know, they don't give you the hardest stunt in your first job. You know, I think I, the first job I did like some fat hand springs down like a, like a school corridor. And then, um, you know, you know, you get your, yeah, you start to like feel your way into different things and like get more comfortable mentally with like throwing yourself on, um, yeah, I mean it's a progression for sure. That's cool. I, that make yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't think about that. That it would be like gym great base as well. Cause like when I think of back handsprings, I think of Power Rangers. Just my brain. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. how do you not? Like I rem- right. I remember as a kid being like, if I was a Power Ranger, that's how I would travel. I wouldn't walk anymore. I'd be like, all right, gotta go get the milk and just. <laughs> right. Right. You know? Yeah. But uh, I'm not that flexible. But. <laughs> So that that makes sense that you would need someone like that and working your way go okay cool so you didn't run into anything what if you did and then you're I like have. let's do that did you <laughs> well no not during that job we have an audition and it went really well and I was doing like butterfly twists and you know all these different flips and then all of a sudden I was like okay I'm gonna finish it off with just something simple I'm gonna just do a bunch of back handsprings and I'm just gonna keep going and I kept going and I didn't. Oh, no. Table and I literally did a backhand spring into the table and I ended up getting a huge hole in my shin. People no. went in my shin and they had to rush me to the hospital and I had to get staples back, staple my other. Oh no. Did you get the part? Uh, no. I mean, I would have <laughs> if I was able to physically do it, but because I had staples in my leg, oh, I could do yeah. it. Yeah. That oh, that sucks. You just went a little too far. <laughs> I was, like, I was a little cocky. Thinking. Yeah, yeah. The table's not the problem. You can land yeah. the table. Just don't get a hole in your leg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I did that one back handspring, it would have been a lot different. Life would have been different. Oh, man, <laughs> if we'd have known, you know? <laughs> yeah. You learn from your mistakes. That's crazy. This might be a dumb question, but when you're doing back handsprings, can you see anything? Because you're going yeah. so fast. Like, are you able to do that? Yeah, you can spot. Oh, even in mid motion. That sounds like a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we are superheroes. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> That's nuts. Because I, I think about like d- going back to dancers, actually. When you do like ballerina stuff and they're like twisting, you know, they like turn their head first and then their body so you're not like getting dizzy. Is exactly. it the, is it the same? With- yeah, you spot something. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, okay. Are you pretty good at flipping? Um, not right now because I've been like in Corona times right now. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. But yeah, normally I used to flip like a couple times a week, but it has you know none of the gyms are open in my area. So. Right, right. That makes sense. Is a front flip or a back flip harder? Um, I guess it depends what your preference is. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I used to love doing more backflips and back tucks and stuff, but now yeah, um, like forward stuff now, like front aerials and front, uh, like Webster's is what it's called. Oh yeah, you could do like front yeah. tricking stuff now. With a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've I've gone down those rabbit holes on YouTube. I lived <laughs> in those rabbit holes of YouTube. <laughs> like I remember in like oh five probably, uh, wow. there was zero gravity. Yeah, but, phew, dude, high school me was like. The dawn of YouTube. Everyone, watch how cool this is. They're dressed yeah. like Neo from the Matrix. Watch them. No, just follow. like with that. Actually, is why I love your Kali Diaries so much because uh. it it reminds me of that where it's just like it's just really cool action and like I don't know. It's just it's my jam. I dig it. It, it was like literally just for me too because I was like I was starting to train Kali and I was like, man, it'd be really cool if I could just like video this yeah. just to see. Like, of like me through the like this art form sure um and it, it i was just like i just wanted and i want to do things i want to yeah. like do to do on like like a job or something if i like said oh, i want to do this move and they're like no so then this was my opportunity to do it in my own project so yeah. that's why I, yeah i think that's the way to do it especially now with the internet and youtube like the industry the worst part about being an actor is you got to get permission to do it you have to be casted yeah. Whereas, like, I just cast myself, and I do my thing, and it's like, yeah. oh, right, we can just skip half of this process, and it looks freaking good. I love yeah. it. Yeah, you're not restricted by goals, other visions and stuff. Yeah, it's, have, like, more having freedom. That's yeah. what I love about it. Yeah. yeah, it's so cool. 
It's so cool. If anyone has it, they need to check out. I, I've watched all of them. I'll just. Oh say wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to brag, but I'm pretty good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's so cool that and like tricking and stuff like that. It's one thing that I learned last night is even things that look super simple are super complicated. And there's so many little moves that go into it. So I have so much respect for people that are doing it. And I watch it, and I'm like, it's a fight scene, but like you don't understand how many right. levels deep, not just wow. from choreography, but how you're shooting it and the way your movement is. It's like, dude, Lots. if people knew. Yeah, exactly. If people knew. We just need to, that one day we'll get Oscar stunts, and then people will understand. One day. Exactly. Yeah. They'll realize how hard it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Give it a shot. Yeah, you try. Just put tables all over. <laughs> <bring>. Enjoy. <laughs> Use several backhand spins. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it a momentum thing when you're doing that? Like once you get going, it's it's easier to keep going than to stop as far as yeah. backhand springs go. It's always the first or first or second one is always the hardest. Yeah. You get the momentum. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm just gonna yeah. break down backhand. Right, let's do the math. <laughs> once you're there. So do you do you remember your first gig then that was stunt related or acting related if they were different? Um, I think one of my first stunt jobs was working on Zed's Declassified. Oh, yeah. I got hired to double Lindsay Shaw, and they're like, "Okay, all you need to do is a bunch of like a twist down a school corridor. That's the one." Oh, and perfect. I just did a bunch of different things, and I got to work with Fred Savage. He was like the director Sweet. for that episode. So yeah. I think that was one of my first jobs. What? That's pretty you know? cool. Yeah. Pretty yeah. cool. And Nickelodeon. Yeah. Nickelodeon. It's exactly. Way to, it's a way to go. It's a way to go. Yeah. So then do you remember going from like back handsprings, which I'm sure you did as a Laker girl with dance and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that was kind of in your wheelhouse. Do you remember you had to step out of it? Oh, yeah. I mean, every job after that was just like up, yeah. up on the bar, you know. There you and go. I feel like. The last job I did, I was doing stuff that I had never had the opportunities of doing in my career. So, like, I remember sure. it's a show called Star Girl on DC. Oh, yeah, yeah. Airing. Um, so, I, you know, there was a scene where uh, me and Christina Basket, another stunt performer, um, she was doubling Star Girl. We had, like, I think 12 or 13 wire gags in one scene. What? Split what? between the two of us. And we only had one day of rehearsal. Oh. So, that was, like amazing that we were able to accomplish that because i thought that was going to be impossible but i can't believe yeah. it and one of them was like a one-er shot like a 360 one-er and we had like three or four wire gags just in that one shot what, what? so yeah we're like constantly bar is getting risen every job wow. yeah yeah it's a one-er and you're doing all so are you just like getting thrown around all the time you're just wires everywhere like how, how would you even attempt yeah. During that one, yeah, we were like a little entangled wires because we had to reverse engineer it so that the wires would be perfectly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was like, yeah, it was just like a marionette puppet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how I envision it because no got a gag per the shot. But if you're doing a bunch and there's two people, it, wow, yeah. it's almost but, like a dance. <laughs> exactly, and that's how like they shoot Avengers. There's like. 20 people in a scene and some of them are like half of them are on wire so it's like like sure. all the and like wires and everything it's just crazy people have no idea what goes into these action scenes that are five seconds sometimes yeah like, yeah it's insane that's my job to bring this up and be like everyone look <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been caught up with another performer doing a thing um yeah i think i have yeah <laughs> wire so much now i can't remember a specific, a specific time now but yeah sure do yeah you feel, do you feel like when you're on wires is same as when you're off because you're so used to them you spend so much time you're like ah oh, yes <laughs> <laughs> more comfortable in life not wearing them because everything rides up in your crotch so. that is a great point yeah it can be painful so when you're doing like a ton of wire work and stuff you have if you're doubling someone i'm gonna ask dumb questions because i just don't know if you're wearing a harness and you have the costume over it when you're doubling, I assume? Yes. Okay. So then how do you breathe? <laughs> like the, you, so you're cinching, it's like a, like a corset pretty much and it's Got tight it. and then your costume on top of it. And then you just like, just don't drink a lot of water cause you, oh, then yeah. you have everything off 
because you, if you pee, like you need like someone to help you or it's just going to take a long time. And you oh, know what? Yeah. yeah, I know. It's like a pain thing. <laughs> See, another thing you don't realize. Yeah. There's so much. It's like putting on armor and then you got to take, all right, hold on. I just got to, it's like, oh man, me again. Uh, let's get there and watch. <laughs> You don't want to be that guy they're waiting on, so it, yeah. Exactly. That's another skill that stunt performers uh, should put on their resume. Can hold bladder for long periods yeah. of time. Like, what? <laughs> Done. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I know this is going to sound really TMI, but I bought these squares, and Smart. they're... <laughs> it's not regular underwear, but... Please tell it me it's a diaper. Warm things. Genius. So, in your pants, but like... But you could. You know, <laughs> but you can it a little bit, and it would absorb it perfectly. Sure, I love I, <laughs> I love the option. <laughs> yeah, and I think you're the first person I ever told this to. This this is what I'm. I it's did. like a, one of my secrets. Yeah, my secrets. now we know. Yeah, if, now if you want, if you want to get diaper. Pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> diaper <underwear. laughs> That's smart rough, though. Fire days. But what do they say? It's a modern problems call for modern solutions. Exactly. Well, you know, when people are um, watching uh, the ball drop for Times Square, you know, yeah. they don't have rooms, So people wear diapers now. What? And they'll literally pee. Yeah, you've never heard that? No. Yeah. That's, but yeah. also, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. got to, wow. Yeah. yeah. But think about it. You, wanna, you don't right. want to place in the whole thick of like Times Square. If you got a good spot, you're dying there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there aren't really any restrooms there. Have you seen any when you're watching oh, it? No. On your... no. And it's cold, so you can warm it's... yourself up. So, and that's, and uh, they're uh, drinking, you know. I'm sure they're, you know. Yeah. I see it. I see it. Wow. Yeah. We're just peeling back layers here. We're seeing the yeah. truth of things. Yeah. <laughs> that's... Covering never thought about it never thought about yeah. it and you're right because also if you're in one of the best spots that's like yeah. you know along the rail moving oh no it's like man oh. wow and then sometimes it's in the rain which i guess uh, is good for cover you know because if you do yeah. have an accident then you're like it's rain yeah you know? yeah exactly <laughs> my pants are wet they're yeah, wet please yeah. all of me is wet what do you right. talk about <laughs> now, a few feet please <laughs> Just in case. Bodies around, you can't tell if you saw pee. So. Yeah, and then just blame the person next to you. Yeah, that you was know. amazing. Yeah, it's, just keep making looks. You know, <laughs> of like it's it? blaming all the other people. Yeah. Is that that? Yeah. I don't think it is. And then when people see you looking at the other person, they're like, "Oh, they smell something. Oh, oh, it's blue hat. Yeah, definitely blue hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I I love all looking like. Do you know you have over 200 IMDb credits stacked up? Oh, well, not quite. Almost, almost there, but not quite. That's insane. You're <laughs> one person. Yeah. Now, just, and you're not seven. What's, <laughs> you know I'm not. That's, I, that's true. I don't eight. know that. <laughs> oh. That's right. You, you know what? You, hmm. How did you, <laughs> how did you get all this wisdom and learn all these things? <laughs> Interesting. I'm going to start a conspiracy. Just that you're super, and the de yeah. and the depends is not a stunt trick. Yeah. It's a necessity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Yoda's like, wasn't he like almost a thousand years old? Yeah, he died at nine hundred. Yeah. I mean, not that I know that for sure, but I definitely know that for sure. Well, baby Yoda's what fifty? Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Definitely still in depends for sure, but like, oh, sure, no, but those are like uh, huggies. Yes, it's like a Benjamin Button thing. Oh, yeah. Know? We see it. Yeah. We're figuring it out. We're figuring yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> is there a show that you've done? Because you've done stuff from like CSI to like Grey's Anatomy to like things that you would not contextualize as like doing stunt work in them. Is yeah. there a sh is there something that you've done in the past that you think like, all oh, right, I did stunts on that that people wouldn't necessarily expect? Oh man, like every show? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. All of them. Uh, like like you said, like CSI, like um. You know, so what, what shows? What shows? Uh, like, 400 to choose from. Good luck. <laughs> like uh, Sunny in Philadelphia. You know, you don't think of that yeah. as a show. It's not oriented. But yeah, they have fun gags every now and then. And I actually, I actually, that job was really interesting because I actually had to um, be naked. And I had to do like Perfect. second Perfect. positions um, behind a, a screen. But we're doing that. Sure. We're, it's like the silhouette. Yeah. And then we 
crash through the the wall. Sweet. <laughs> you, expect, you would expect that from that show. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, all the time, all the time. Yeah, yeah. that's why I watch. What's <laughs> <laughs> gonna happen on that show? That's true. That's true. That's hilarious. It, that show cracks me up. Yeah, and you, you just never know. Like what? It, as a stunt performer, you never know what to be doing, which has got to be kind of the fun of it. Yeah. Like every week is a different one. You never know. Like one week I'm like, you know, doing a naked faux sex scene throw, being thrown through a wall. And then the next minute I'm doing like minute, like wire work scene. And then the next week I'm like playing like a, a clown stripper that's doing a fight scene. You just never yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Are there any sort of stunts nowadays or jobs that you like get excited about doing when you hear about it? You're like, oh, sweet. I get that again. Um, anytime I get to do a fight. It's yeah. just like being able to incorporate all the different martial arts I train in, like that just really lights me up because it's just my passion that I'm always going to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Even when I'm like 100 because I'm 70 now. Yeah, so. you got time. A little bit. Yeah. Not a lot, but a little yeah. bit. Is there, do you have a favorite martial art to practice because you do so many? Um, right now, I really like capoeira. Ooh, good one. Yeah. And then I really like Kali still. Like Kali still like – I am. Yeah, because it's just endless knowledge in that because there's so many different forms of like Kali in different regions in the and so much history. And I just feel like I'm like a child still learning, yeah. you know, much more to learn. And like, I just feel like a, a fetus compared to other people and their knowledge of the Kali arts. So, yeah. Sure, sure. Was it tough? Because like Kali, you've got the two. Is, was it tough, like, working both of your hands for multiple attacks and stuff like that? Because it's different than one and different thing and kicking. Right, yeah. I mean, Kali is actually everything. Everything weapons. Like, oh, sweet. Double, like, single stick, double sword, single sword, oh, uh, short sword and uh, shield, uh, sword, uh, knives. Like, it's really? endless. Staff. Even staff. We have staffs. Um, they have different types of sword. Like, it's just, that's why it's, like, endless. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I just know it as the two, like, sticks. Karambits. Yeah. It's everything. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. That's got to feel pretty badass, too. We are like, choose a weapon. Oh, I can pick any of them. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's why neat. it's, like, endless. Endless. And I, I, working with the double weapon has definitely helped with, like, in life. Because you're working both hemis hemispheres of your brain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. your left and your right and if you're right-handed you know you don't normally use your left but now that you're forced to it's actually creating like you know cognitive like, i don't know you're it, ascending memory i think like and just in general in life like it's just really good for you that's what my uh my instructor always says because you're using a usually dormant part of your brain and it's like you're yeah. you're upgrading yourself pretty cool that's pretty yeah cool. And, you, yeah. and you've done, like, everything as well. You've done TV. You've done movies. You've done video games. Do you remember your first mocap job? A whole – it's, like, theater, but also stunts, but also really cool pajamas. It's, like, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Tight pa pajamas, Yeah, though. of course. Of course. You can't have baggy ones because then they can see the depends. There's, they're thinking, right. too. Yeah. Would be a, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Let your secrets down. I just told you it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my first job, it was, like, for a video game that actually never got released. And uh, I remember, trying to, like, you know, I was playing uh, hers. Oh, and, like, sweet. Yeah, but then I sucked at it. So they're like, Lauren, why don't you sit down for this one? <laughs> <laughs> By watching, actually. Because I was like, okay, I, you know, I was too in my head. I was like, you know, I wasn't really being the character. And so after taking acting classes, it helped me develop this other skill that I didn't have before. Um, and then like physicality with the acting. And so that helped tremendously. And so now I, I play now, I play kids now. I'm okay. I characters. I play dogs. I played, Sweet. you know, club ladies. I played like, you know, every. Anything that you can think of, I probably played a character like that now because now I've been able to uh, transform myself into these different characters now. Yeah, and with like performance capture and stuff like that, you're not limited by anything, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I have a, a TJ Storm has been on the show before, and he's like the, the best dude ever. Yeah, One of those that like transforms. Yes. It's like this giant dude, but then when he's in mocap, you're like, he can play a building, but also a monster. Like, he's Godzilla. <laughs> and he's the sweetest guy, too. He is. The yeah. nicest dude. It's, cra 
It, yeah, a giant. <laughs> your ass though, too, at the same time. Exactly. Pick up, you'll have a card next to you in the hospital bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you made me do that. <laughs> I I love it. I love diving into stuff like that and like motion capture. It's such a it's such a crazy thing now. I mean, the technology is just getting worlds better every week almost it feels so to to, to have that sort of from an acting standpoint have the chains completely off pretty yeah yeah it's a really fun job to be uninhibited like just be a child at work pretty much yeah are are the floors padded when you did it no i mean but you can wear on your oh yeah got it got it there's a (laughs) you can meet in the middle we bring up mats and we can be safe about things for sure gotcha got that makes sense safety there it is. Safety. There's that word. I dig it. Did you work on Punked? Oh, yeah. I think I worked on an episode with Justin Bieber. And he was like, I can't remember what it was. I think we were at a restaurant and we like fought or something. Or me uh, me and another girl were fighting. I can't remember. That was so long ago, man. That's but crazy. I remember Justin Bieber there. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin who? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that see that's another random credit that you're like oh random right? yeah, I see okay action action I see okay punked yeah all right yeah right. Do yeah you, do you find like when I talked to TJ he talked about there's like in the world of performance capture there's the like cutscenes with like the come in and then if there's any stunts there's that and then there's like the game movement as well yeah do you find that the jerking in like video games and stuff like that are attacked differently from your point of view when you're doing the job um attacked in uh, like sense. like in performance wise because you if you're doing wire work you have to move in a certain way to where the wires work whereas in the performance capture setting it's a it's the same job but it's also a different job right yeah um i mean i always try to stay there as much as i can yeah whether it's like you know if i'm playing like a cat or something keep like the claws out even though they may not always see the finger capture, but like I just always try to keep, you know, like uh, try to stay in care of my can. So whether it, you know, body movements, like the breathing and like everything, like I try to incorporate that into every different character. Oh, that's smart. That's smart. Just because it's always capturing. So that makes sense. Just think right. ahead. Is- yeah. And then everything, like you, like even when you're just walking, you have to be caught, like, you know, just very aware that gamers are watching everything true so if someone's out of character they might be like why is he doing why are they walking normal there and <laughs> wait here and like so you got to really be careful and like watch yourself and like you almost have to be way more careful in video games for sure that makes sense because they'll be think <laughs> they'll be think pieces of it later be like harley walked a little different in this scene what does it mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty cool that you got to be harley quinn yeah. Not, not bad. Yeah. I had I got to do the uh the trailer for that, so that was really fun. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So cool. Fight choreography different in video games versus like live action and stuff like that, how you have to do it? Um not really. I mean sometimes you get stuck because the, the the if you're like, you know, the other performer, mm-hmm. you're Velcro, it's like kind of like a Velcro, oh. and then it might ruin the shot. So sometimes you have to distance yourself just a little bit, but um, for the most part, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes in mocap, we just make up the fight on the day, like right there. Oh. For this movie and TV, we have way more rehearsal than we do in a mocap set. Wow, that, yeah, I mean, that just goes to show how talented the people in the mocap are at fighting geography and stuff like that like uh i don't know i'll come up with something let's see what we do and then you're like the trailer bonkers yeah. sometimes it's like that sometimes it's like that yeah wow i never but, like, i never thought about that i worked on Into the badlands and we think it was literally learn the choreography right before you shoot because it's a chinese set like uh yeah the fight coordinator and the uh action director they're all from jackie chan's stunt team so they mm-hmm. that's how they work sometimes and so they just do it on the spot but it's on your toes. It makes you a sharper performer. It makes you learn faster. And be there. You know, you have to be up. Your game has to be up to, in order to do that. To yeah. be able to learn, like, choreography. 
I will say Into the Badlands, one of my all time favorite shows. I it's Kill Bill meets Mad Max, and it's like yeah. the coolest. And yeah, I mean, you can tell it's Jackie Chan stunt team. Yeah, you know, it's like it's art the way they're doing some of these fight scenes. And yeah. like, like we had, uh, I had V Dan Tran on uh, oh, yeah. a while ago. And V Dan's love- like the coolest dude again. It's just, nice. and he he talked about like joining Jackie Chan's stunt team and what that was like. And then he said, he's like, you know, it's run like a Chinese set. And he goes, there are very few people that I've met that could handle an actual Chinese set. And he's like, we are just like pumping them out. I'm like, but but you're doing wire work and all this stuff. He goes, yeah, I know. Sometimes we're editing on. What? Yeah. That's insane. The turnaround. Yeah. So talented. So talented. The greatest. The greatest. Yeah. And so yeah. you, what did you do on Into the Badlands? Um, so Mickey Fashionello, she normally doubles. Um, the Widow. Beecham, yeah. Um, no, and um, she was on another amazing job. So I covered for her for like season two, or is it season three? I think season three I covered for what? her. What? Yeah. So I got to play Widow for a couple of. I got to double one another character, another Asian character. So it was um, it was really fun, and it, it was really crazy because we shot in Ireland. So there was yeah. the Irish. Uh, English team, and then there's the Chinese team, and then the, me. It was the only American, so I'm like, where do I belong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, a Chinese team. But then I'm speak English like the Ameri- like the um, Irish team. But yeah. I'm not I'm like my own little. <laughs> there you go. I I'm. I, I had fun on that set though. It was amazing. Did you, well, did you have to fight in the heels? Uh, some shots, yeah. Some shots, oh, yeah. Respect. Yeah, but Respect. Emily. Badass. She, she, yeah, it's awesome. Like I watched her instead. I'm like, wow, she learns really fast. That's crazy. I, I remember as a kid, I had this irrational fear of high heels because it wasn't somebody getting a stiletto to the throat, and then I, I think, and then it happened in Into yeah. the Badlands, and I was like, oh, it's real. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I felt very validated at that moment. <laughs> like, You're afraid of stilettos? I was like, listen, you don't know the damage they can do. Like nobody yeah. does that. I would use it as a weapon for yeah, sure. Of good, like I would take off my shoes and you collie them with my with my shoes. Boom, boom! Yeah. It's yeah. genius, but also yeah. terrifying. You have weapons on your feet. Well, nobody, yeah, yeah. I would take yeah. them off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's there's <laughs> versatility with these. Right. Yeah. Adapt. That's the key. That's cool though. I love Inland's. And then I know <laughs> you went later on because you've been killing it with the marvel stuff as well speaking of superheroes and things like that like i know you worked on agents of shield yes did agents of shield you did defenders yep you're you're in the superhero world now is it is it how is it different than you expected because uh, you have this um, idea of what it is but then when you're the action and doing it it's got to be crazy actually i never know i never knew what to expect honestly Smart. i know i was nervous when i first yeah. got hired for Electra. i was super nervous um and then after that, it, you know, I got used to things and wearing the superhero outfits. And it was just, like, just fun. Just a fun thing to be a part of, you know. It's like yeah, yeah. living with characters. It's like a dream come true. So, is, yeah. Is there crazy rehearsals for things like those shows? Yes, definitely. Yeah, gotta, be. Yeah. gotta be. Yeah. Especially, like, massive. Like, they do a lot of, like, one takes. I mean, Miss Daredevil Hallway. She, we're still on this. Like, if one yeah. dude misses yeah. their cue, back to one, guys. Yeah, Chris Brewster is amazing. I mean, he's done years now on Daredevil, and they it, they keep upping the bar on that. It's just, ugh, amazing. And I'm so bummed it's, like, that show's done, but. Oh, no. Ugh. They, they just better replace it with something equal later on. I see you, people. I see you. I wonder. I yeah. wonder. Did you get to use any – what – have you got to use any cool on set, being that like you're into weapons? Is there anything that sticks out? Because Electra's got some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, she got to use the size. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, um, what else have she been able to use? Um, I worked on Titans. I got to use oh, double sword. Sweet. Yeah. I love double weapons, honestly. Like That's yeah. like a good thing to do. That's fair. Yeah. That's, fair. that's so cool. So then from there, you got to do Dark Souls. That's a pretty big one. I did the trailer for that. Those are basically mini movies for nowadays. Yeah. For yeah, I mean they they look so real. It looks like like a live action almost. Yeah. And so much work. Yeah. It's nuts. They like I had uh I keep there's so many people that I feel like you've crossed 
like paths with that have been on the show before. I'm like, all right, and this, like, how's it for you? Like Darren Ross came on yes. and he's one of my favorite people in the whole world. And yeah. he's one of those that like talks about apex legends and doing stuff. Like that. He's like, they're basically movies that we're making. I'm like, yeah. but people don't realize cause they, it's so easy to kind of dismiss it as a trailer. Be like, no, right. there's, there's actors and there's work, like it's art almost, you know? Yeah. Like, it is like art. And it's like, oh, man, it's, it's incredible, like the technology. Yeah, and what they do, it's just amazing. It's so cool. Has yeah. It, has there been anything that was like a really tough option as far as stunts go? Like, how do you audition for stunts these days? It's got to be a lot of like word of work begets work. Yeah. Um, most of the time, you don't audition, but every now and then, you'll meet a stunt coordinator that wants to see your stuff or audition you. Uh, uh, for actual Daredevil, when I had the opportunity oh. to do. Electra, that's when I had to submit several different videos of me doing martial arts, flips, everything. So um, I had to submit a couple videos. And I knew the stunt coordinator, but he still wanted to be sure. Sure, yeah. <laughs> that was a little like, ah, am I going to get it? Am I going to Just like very uh, yeah, nerve-wracking time. <laughs> yeah, that is a testament to actually why something like the Kali Diary is uncertain. Because you have yourself on tape and you're like, hey, here's my thing, check it out. Yeah, yeah. It's like my own audition almost. Like, yeah. I feel like, I see this weapon I have on Call of Duty 3. If you want to see this weapon, it's Call of Duty 7. So, yeah, it's been really helpful, actually. Yeah. Do you find that, because that, you've been doing this for so long, do you find that that's kind of how the game is played nowadays? Is like, there's a way of known opportunities if you're putting in the work and showing it off the right way? Yeah, I think a lot of performers are starting to shoot their own stuff, and then it helps get, you know, it's kind of yeah. like advertising. Yeah. To show what you can do, your skill set. Um, yeah, and it, I, I mean, I think a lot of coordinators look at social media just to see what you're training. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's a really important tool nowadays. I think so, too. I think so, too. Yeah. And then I know recently you got to do the motion capture for Ahsoka, which is, you know, one of the biggest characters in Star Wars ever. How did that come about? Because it's, I don't know, it feels like such a weight you have to carry for that. Like, this is a huge deal. It's Ahsoka. Like, that's Dave Filoni's baby. And they yeah. were like, now you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I got an email, and I, like, read it, and I'm like, wait, what? And then I had to read it again, because I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, okay. Um, wow. Like, just a service. Sure, and then, sure. like, you're going to work with Ray Park. And I'm like, oh, okay. And you're going to help choreograph it with him. I'm like, oh, Ooh. All right. So Ooh. like, uh, uh, I was just like going to pee in my pants. I thought like, cause but I was you were just, prepared, but I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had the, the thick ones on that day. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, once I peed in my pants, then I, I like, and then, um, we started off with rehearsals with just Ray first. I think we had like a couple days of rehearsal and then we helped, we choreographed it together. So we changed it, we ran through it like a bunch of times. And then we flew to San Francisco, I think the week after, and we showed Dave one day. And then he made his tweaks and notes because he, you know, he's God. Yep. 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 <laughs> um, and then we shot and it was, um, you know, I just was like, I was so nervous. Like, you know, it's such a huge responsibility, but I also didn't know how well received it would be. Like, I didn't know how big of a deal it was actually going to be. Like, I knew sure. it would, I didn't know. And right. so, of course, fan group had been so amazing and, you know, supportive of, supportive of me. And it's been just amazing and an amazing experience. Sure. And I mean, that that's a testament to the work because you killed it. You know what I mean? Like, if you hadn't, as you said, like with video game people, it's like, well, excuse me. Star Wars fans are the same way. So I think that's a, another testament to how well that everything went through. I mean, you had some pretty cool moves. Like I was thinking about the one where you went to your knees and like spun around. That's something I hadn't seen before. And it was just a really cool little thing. I dug it. <laughs> it's a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was so fun to work with Dave, you know. I mean, I nerve wracking because, you know, you want him to like what you made up. And he, you know, he obviously made some notes, you know, but he really liked the bones of what we did. So it was just a really fun and, you know, satisfying for me to help choreograph something like that. It's just yeah, you know, such an accomplishment. For sure. I mean, you're in Star Wars history now. 
It was yeah. a new thing. It was pioneering. It was like the first time that had been done, and it went very well. You know, it's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely a career high. Yeah, you get to use lightsabers. You know, check. Not bad. Well, okay. real life. <laughs> yeah. Don't no no no. We didn't. No no, it wasn't. <laughs> and then I know after that you returned because you got to work on the Mandalorian, another pioneering thing that's on the cusp of new stuff. Like up until now, you'd done Star Wars, but it was the motion capture side where it was foam sticks. But in Star Wars, yeah. what? Yeah, that was crazy too. I mean, to be on that set alone like, was I just bet. a treat because you, I had this uh, opportunity to look at the 360. Volume? Yeah, yeah, it even goes all the way up, like the ceiling. What? what? Yeah, it's incredible. Like, uh, so it's like also, what's this called? It's like a dome. Yeah. <laughs> There's no number for that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just incredible, like, you know, to get the costume fittings and then to wear the outfit with the fur and like the helmet and like to have a team of people working, you know, and then to work on the set, like everything to even fight stormtroopers. And I actually got to hit them. What? Like, oh yeah. Cause you, you doubled the armor. Yeah, so I actually, they were like, just hit me. And I'm like, okay, because we're so used to not hitting people. But I actually got to wail on them and break their helmets. And it was just fun. What? It was just like, if I had any anger, I was taking it on the stormtroopers. And it was like, oh, <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And the armor is another one of those, like, the character that, I mean, really stuck with people. It just looks so cool and... You got, yeah. to, you got to hit stormtroopers. That's that's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. Did any helmets get knocked off? Yeah. And sometimes I would hit them and then their helmet would like spin. So then the back <laughs> can't see anything. Poor guys. It was, you know, I'm, I'm happy with how it came out. It was amazing. Sure. And Emily Swallow's amazing. Her voice alone, like, I just, it's just so rich and like, I, I've forgotten that she's not actually British. In the oh, yeah. I didn't either. I thought she was. Yeah. The, no, that's not her real accent. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. That's, uh, pretty convincing, I would say. Wow, very good. Yeah, not bad. Was the was the hammer heavy? You know, it's not real. So. Yeah, fair, <laughs> fair. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you don't use real weapons? Oh, no. <laughs> um, is made of like a like a foamy wood slash plastic soft foam sure. so it was that bad but with the armor like the actual pieces and like the one piece suit with the helmet like every felt a little heavier than normal because you're weighted down in the suit and then like, i had straps on underneath my costume so everything was a little more a little more restrictive yeah so yeah it wasn't the easiest thing to wield better than using a real weapon so i'm grateful for yeah. that yeah <laughs> there how's the visibility because the helmets are t visors and i imagine your eyes can kind of move a little bit yeah and like the breathing the breathing was oh, more yeah. Hard. yeah it's like um you know a mask and then fighting but worse because it's oh. it's like you're oh yeah you got nothing everything yeah it's like the whole you know it's like wearing a mask yeah <laughs> <laughs> mask fighting so you're breathing your own carbon dioxide and um, and the visibility sucks because you're breathing out of your mouth most of the time and then it fogs up the shield. Oh, yeah. So we have to put shampoo in there to like defog it. Um, I think cosplay players probably know that yeah. trick, shampoo or something. Sure. Um, sure. And, um, yeah, the visibility would move as well when you like move really fast. Sometimes a helmet would also do that. But I had a ton of pads in there, so. Oh, uh, so my next question is like, how much padding is in there to keep it from doing what it needs to do? Exactly. And with a helmet shape like that, like looking down and stuff is not the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, exactly. Was there? Strap on too. Oh, sm smart, smart. Was there more rehearsal time for Clone Wars or Mandalorian? Uh, I think Clone Wars. Really? Yeah. They set out two days for Ray and I to rehearse at a special facility. And, uh, we had many hours. And then when we went to San Francisco, we also rehearsed there with Dave. Whereas Mandalorian, the store coordinator had so much work to do that he'd right. be like, 
the back lot and we'll rehearse right now. Come to this set and we'll rehearse really quick. So I think I have time on Clone Wars for sure. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool though. Like you got to be an armor and it's just ah. What's your life, I Lauren? Go to the back lot. I got to go to the volume. I got to be on my set. Like it was just. I got to meet Baby Yoda. Yeah. How cool was that? Ah. <laughs> he's still everyone whenever he's in a room. I bet. Even not like doing anything if he's just laying there people are like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> poor guys no look at him look at him yeah i know all the girls are like oh my god <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i bet i i love to hear that like on the set people are wearing star wars stuff because i feel like in a lot of things it's like it's not cool to be a fan you know it's like when it's done, then you're like, oh, my God, how crazy that I was in the Defenders. But, like, to be on the set, crazy, right? But that is the testament of the people who are working on it because they're that good. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I work on it. That's <laughs> yeah. So cool. That's so yeah. nice. Is there any, looking back on stuff, like, is there any stunt that you've had that took a little while to kind of get to it? Because I feel like you can't, no, nothing trains you to work in a helmet that spins around and does all these things, but as particular ones that ring out as difficult to grasp beforehand. Yeah, the gigs on um, Stargirl. There is like some extensive wire stuff on that show, and oh, yeah. there's a guy yeah. on um, the Great Wall. Oh, and sweet. And I shoots on that, and I think I had to do this one wire gag where I hit the pagoda, and I had to tumble down and then like fall and somehow but we didn't have the right rigging equipment because oh, no. you know we were in china and they wanted to change the gag so then it was really difficult to do it with the, with the with the equipment we had so um that was like a really long day for me so yeah. it's like <laughs> and I, I don't think we had water on set I, it was like crazy or something like that Ooh. being like dehydrated severely yeah sure. man you really <laughs> got to earn it on those days yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a question. So I, I've seen a lot of like previs and stuff and like things with other stunt buddies. And like there's always these cardboard boxes. Yeah. <laughs> are, are those filled with anything? Or are they just no. boxes? Boxes. Just boxes. Does it hurt when you're thrown into I, them? <laughs> do you know why we have those? No. Okay. So the reason Sweet. why we make boxes is so we because we have a rehearsal room, right? Right. And we don't you to see what's in our rehearsal, our junky rehearsal. We literally make a wall so you don't <laughs> see the background. So you never know, like, if we change, like, hey, this angle will work. Like, okay, let's just put boxes there. Oh. It always looks seamless. The background looks clean. Genius. Wow. Yeah. Here I was thinking it was a recreation of the set. <laughs> <laughs> And we use boxes as chairs because that's supposed to be there or a table. So, yeah, we do use boxes for props and stuff as well. But Crazy. Is, hide our mask, really. There's no <laughs> way that it's fun to fall into a bunch of boxes. There's still oh. edges. No, it's not that bad, actually. Real? I kind of want to do it. Are you? Can I do Are you giving me permission to set up boxes in my house and just throw myself into them? Yeah, I mean, cool. but you have to do many layers. Oh, oh, oh. So if you do the ones, so the big ones, and then put another layer on top, so it's like two or three boxes deep up. But I don't know how high you're gonna go. Yeah, that's true. We'll we'll no, workshop it. You know, I don't want to be liable for yeah. anything. <laughs> I'll send you the hospital bill. Be like, it didn't work. <laughs> Where do you they know, get those boxes? There's so many of them. Do they? Do you have like a like a <laughs> subscription to like? Oh, go to the box store and just get a ton of boxes. <laughs> Um, uh, no, but we do have competitions who can, like, make the box the fastest. Oh, that's cool. It's like a pizza box. Mm, real fast. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. And you see how fast you can do it. And there's Ooh. techniques. There's techniques. Different Ooh. techniques. Yeah. See, this is another thing that anyone who wants to get into stun, remember, you got to make boxes okay. very fast. <laughs> and you have to move pads. Oh, yeah. If you're in pads. So on another job, I made a competition, like, Whoever moves the most pads gets nothing, but they get points. <laughs> so if you carry like a one inch pad, that's like one point. So it's like it's different. And then if you get cre creativity points, you stack maybe another, like a, I don't know, the way you carry it or the way you carry it with another pad, you get creativity points. I'm the president Ooh, of this um, organization. Done. So it's official now. I respect the, the way that you're doing things. 
it's a map making uh, competition. Yes, indeed, yeah. indeed. Is there points for carrying them on your head? Yes, yes. Okay, that thank is, God. That's like an additional three points, but <sighs> pick on that. It's like a the common way to move a oh, pad. Damn it! I thought I was strong. Like ants. That's ants. Uh, well, I can see it. It's like it's, it's all like, about the movement. It's like when you see different martial arts, you're like, that is clearly snake style. You're like, this is ant style. Ant style. Not bad. Yeah, have you seen moving stuff? That's what they do sometimes. Is it? Yeah. Is there points for being able to fit inside of the box? No, but we can try. And then having someone move that box. Boom. Boom. I'll yeah. team up with someone. We'll points. Like a lot of points for that. Done. Done. We figured yeah. it out. You're talking yeah. to the future champion here. Yeah. So I'm wondering then. What is something that you would one skill and then skills and that's how it goes. You just learn skills on the way or you just have a passion and go for it and then train, just train, 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 um, maybe train with other stunt people, try to meet other stunt people to try to get in the business, um, learn how to hustle, which is like going to sets and actually learn uh, meeting stunt coordinators. Um, try getting into SAG by doing background work to get your backgrounds to get in SAG. Um, and then just stay humble and, you know, just have a good head on your shoulder because people want to work with good people, you know, yeah. someone that's shady or, you know, just be honest with your skill set. person, just, you know, just the rule of thumb, like the golden rule, you know, yeah. people treated very much. I think stay so. <laughs> I, humble, you, you know, start to work. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot because you're spending so much time with people. You want to make sure they're not a dick. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's a great way to uh, dismount. Yes. We did it. Dismount. Look, yeah. we did it. We did it for an hour. <laughs> Fun. Dismount and they go and then they batter the judges. I think. Boom. We're yeah, they it. do like yeah. And then the uh, the <laughs> giant you know twirl thing. This is why I'm not a gymnast. Teammates. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. A curtsy, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. Creativity yeah. points. Yeah. We're Creative. here for all of it. But, yeah. dude, this was so fun. This was really cool. Yeah, awesome. It was fun. I had a real good time hanging out. Uh, before I let you go, uh, where can people find you online? Uh, you can follow me on YouTube under Lauren Mary Kim and also Instagram where I post a lot of BTS stuff of all the projects I worked on. Yeah. There you go. See? <laughs> all these bonuses. Yeah. All these bonuses. Love it. And Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.